Are you tired of looking at the same blank pages whenever your application is loading? Well, I've got just the thing for you. Let's go. So as we mentioned earlier, skeleton, right? So you might ask, what is a skeleton? Well, basically a Q-skeleton, which is based on Quasar's definition, is a component for displaying a placeholder preview of your content before you load the actual page data. So in other terms, it is a way of displaying visual elements while the data is still loading. So it's a nice way of informing the user what to expect from the page before it is fully loaded and increases the perceived performance. So in other terms, you can imagine that your data is loading, right? So while it is loading, it's either one of two things. Either, either there is a loading state or there is none. In the case of there is a loading state, it's either a spinning thing or any indicator that is load, it's loading, right? So on the other hand, you may have a just, let's say a blank white page. So in this case, skeleton solves two things. First, it adds information to your screen, meaning you, you see a perceived possible render of, or what do you mean? You receive a possible rendition of data, and at the same time, your, uh, let's say, your front end is responsive as well. So to put things into perspective, if you take a look at Quasar's example right here, Imagine that your data looks something like this, right? So let's say you have a, what do you call this? A card. So let's say a cue card that has, let's say, an avatar, some certain text, and a button that does things, right? So for example, here you can see the card. You can see here as well the textual content. You can see a placeholder, uh, let's see, an image right here or any content right here. And then you have two action buttons. So while the data is still loading, the user can expect that something akin to this is what they're going to see. So it gives your users a preconceived notion of what they will expect from the data itself. So you might ask, why is this important? Actually, it is important in a sense that while your data is still busy, or rather while your backend is still busy fetching the data for you, you will give the users a, what do you call this? A, um, an advanced idea of what they will get when the data is finally fetched. So aside from that, also your application has increased performance per se, meaning that yours, uh, what do you call this? Your application is still responsive regardless of whether the data comes back or not. So in this case, it's either two things, either your data has already been sent or is still being sent, or rather the data is already sent, but it has errors or something, and the data is still not yet sent. So either way, you have something to display to the user while the data is still being fetched, right? So that's the important part of a skeleton, which is what we're going to use this time. So. How do you implement one? So let's try implementing this basic uh, implementation of Quasar. So first, what we need is a card, right? So going back to our application here, so you can see that we have our application right here. So if we go back to our code, here's our application, right? So it's kind of messy, but please do bear with me. Okay, so now that we have this, uh, the next, uh, what we uh, rather, what we're going to do first is we're going to create our own skeleton. So what we need is a div, right? So let's start with a div first. Oh, I apologize. So div, right? Next, we need a card. So that card of ours is going to contain the skeleton itself. So let's add it some, let's say, let's set some max width. So let's style it with max width. Let's say 350 pixels, you know, to set the, what do you call this, to set the size. And then next, we're going to add a item. So 
we have an item, right? So Q item. Next, we're going to add an item section. They're just your typical Q item. But notice, no, notice this, and this is the important part. We add an item section, which is an avatar slot, right? So now that we have an avatar slot, what we're going to do is we're going to add now the skeleton. So let's add the Q skeleton. And then we're going to select a type of skeleton, which is we're going to use the Q avatar skeleton. Now notice, 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 notice this difference. We added an item section, right? The thing is we added an item section wherein the content of the item section is a skeleton. So if you take a look at our card here, you can see that we have now an avatar skeleton. So now that we have an avatar skeleton, next we're going to add another item section, and then we're going to add textual skeleton to it. So let's add another item section. So let's say Q item section. And then that's now that we have that one, we need to add a Q item label. So let's say something like that. So we have an item label, right? And then let's get, uh, let's say, let's add another item label. Let's say this time it's a caption. So we have a caption, right? So here in the first item label, what we're going to add is a Q skeleton with a type of text, meaning it's a textual skeleton. Meaning, so it, it's, you can imagine that it's going to display a bar that signifies that it's a text. So that's what we're going to do as well with the other one. So let's just grab this one and then let's append it over here. So now you can expect that our avatar contains two lines of text right beside it. So if you take a look at this one, as you can see, we have this, right? So the diff, uh, let's see, uh, the page is getting a bit cluttered. Maybe let's declutter for now. Uh, let's see, let's remove these items for now. There's way too much. Uh, let's see. Maybe up to here. There you go. Now that we now at least we have more space. Something like this. Yes. Okay. So okay. Let's see. Okay. So let's add some padding. Now it's much better. Okay, so let's say let's add some 500 pixels. Okay. Let's see. Oh. Okay, let's remove the flex first. There you go. That's what I was talking about. So, as you can see, now we have an avatar, right? Where it has a textual content right beside it. You will notice also this, the difference in size. You see this top bar represents that it's a title and the text below is a caption. So, now that we have these two elements, what we need now is another skeleton. Meaning it signifies that our content has a bigger item below it. So, let's Let's add a Q skeleton here. And then let's set this one with a height of, let's say 200 pixels more or less. And then let's set it to square. Now what's it, what it's going to do is it's going to create a square with a height of 200 pixels. And it's going to take up the entire container. So as you can see now, we have a skeleton here. So the users now have a, let's, what do you call this? a short preview of what the data might look like when it comes back or when it is properly fetched this time. So they can imagine that there's gonna be a picture here of some sort and there's textual content here and then there's a whole bunch of, or rather, there's a huge chunk of content right here. So that's what they are going to expect. Next, this time we're going to add, uh, what do you call this, the cue card actions. So let's add, la, 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 la. let's add the cue card actions this time. So cue card actions, right? So once that, once we have that already, 
uh, this time let's align it to, to, to the right. Okay, so now that it's aligned to the right, we can add now Q skeletons. So it's time to add another skeleton. But this time we're going to add a button. So as you can see, we added a Q button skeleton to signify that we're going to create a skeleton based on the Q button look and feel. So once we do that, it's going to happen is we're going to have two buttons here, right? So there's, uh, what do you call this? There's, uh, they are two connected to each other. So let's add a gutter. So let's say Q gutter. MD. So let's add a medium gutter in between the two. So as you can see now, the users can visualize what they're going to see when the data comes back. So they have an avatar here, there's textual content here, and then a caption here, and they have a big content here, probably an image or a video or any type of content you wish to display. And then lastly, there are two action buttons below them. So that is how you create a skeleton of your application using Quasar's skeleton component. So now that we have our basic skeleton, let's now define what type of skeletons we can create for Quasar. So in the predefined types here, you can see that they have a text, right? So you have a text, which looks like this, a line of, or a, what we call this, a bar. You have a rectangle here, which is a bigger box. You also have a circle, which is rounded, something like this. You also have a Q button, which is this one, akin, or rather it looks like a Q button itself. You also have Q badge, chip, and you have toolbars. You have checkbox as well, toggle. You have slider, range, avatar, and key input. So as you can see, they have, um, they have skeleton types, which are based off of quasars components themselves so next you have animations so as you can see they are there are several animations that you can use in your skeleton component so you have the simple wave uh, wherein you have a bright light passing through your skeleton you have pulse which allows your skeleton to act like it's pulsating you have pulse x wherein it pulsates to the x axis only and you have pulse y where it wherein it pulses to the y-axis. You also have fade, wherein it looks like it's fading directly. You also have blink, and lastly, there's none. So in case you don't want to add, what do you call this? In case you don't want to add animations, you have none. So you might ask, how do you implement an animation? Well, the, I, the thing is you simply add an animation by adding the animation property. So if we, if we implement that in our uh, component, let's say, let's use the, mm, let's try the, what do you call this? Okay, let's try the pulse. Looks kind of appealing. So let's use the pulse. So let's grab this one and then we paste it here. Paste this one and paste it there. So let's just add these animations for this. And then you'll see that they are pulsating, right? That is how you use animations for your skeleton components. As you can see, our square here has stayed the same. So by default, it's using the wave. So we did not apply any, and uh, we did not apply any animations to it. So it's going to use the same thing that it has been doing by default, which is the wave. So aside from animations, we can also set the size of these components, like what we did with the uh, the skeleton, right? The this uh, this skeleton right here. What we did is we set the size for this one. So, in order to set the size, you need you need to simply add the width and the height property. So you can set them to custom sizes based on your preferences. So in these examples, you see that they use different sizes they add a combination of width and height they also use width alone height alone and then they also use the size meaning they're going to use the x and y respectively so you can set custom sizes based on your components needs and lastly 
you also have styling. So for the styling, you can add borders to your components by simply adding the bordered property. So once you add that, it's going to have this nice looking border around your component. So if you take a look at this one, it's pulsating, right? But it doesn't have any borders. Let's say this avatar right here. So let's add a border for that one. Let's say something like that. Now you're going to notice that it has a border around the component now. So that's what the bordered property does. Aside from that, you will also notice that the corners are rounded. So they are smooth, right? So you have these rounded smooth corners, but in case you don't want that kind of feature, you can simply add the squared property or rather the square. So by adding the, let's say, let's use this one. Let's add the square. What's going to happen is the rounded corners are going to disappear. So they're going to look flat like this one. So they have, uh, what do you call this? They have perfectly corn or they have perfect corners rather than rounded corners. So that is what the square property does in case that is what you wish for. Also, you can add custom colors to your components. So in this case, you simply need to add a class, which is the background class. So let's say, let's add a color to the avatar. So for the avatar, in case you want to add colors to it, you simply need to add a BG and then let's say, choose a color. In our case, let's use teal. So it's going to look like that. And then let's say we want the buttons to look something legitimate or to tell us something unique. So let's say, let's add class here as well. So let's say BG red to indicate that it's a wrong choice. And then let's set the other button to BG green to indicate that it's a good choice. So as you can see, you can style your skeletons like this, or you can set them the way they are by default which is the gray color, right? So it all depends on your usage and your specifications. So it is based on what you need for these skeletons. What these examples are showing you is that you can customize your skeletons based on your styling needs. So it's not just a simple gray box looking thing or round looking thing, but rather it is a customizable component that is able to cater to your needs whatever they may be. So in this example, you can see that they implemented a custom border as well, meaning they created the class and bound it to that skeleton. Therefore, applying the styles of that class to the skeleton itself. So if you take a look at this one, you will see some pre-made recipes to give you an example as to how it works. So in this example, they created a scaffolding or they created a what they call this, a placeholder content for YouTube video. They also have a Facebook for this one and they have Twitter as well. So you have Twitch too. And then here you can see that they created a table as well. You also have lists here. So based on what they are saying as well, so your imagination is the only limit indeed for Quasar's skeleton component. So in a sense, Using, uh, using Quasar Skeleton, you can create your own components or your own skeletons based on your UI design. So one way to implement this is to first uh, create the actual data or the actual component to be rendered. And once you're done rendering that, you can convert that to its skeleton equivalent to make things more consistent. So that is one way of applying the skeleton in a real life scenario so for those of you who let's say um want to implement this uh, first one tip that you can use is to first create the actual data or render your actual data and then later on create a skeleton based on that actual data that you're displaying that way your ui is going to look consistent while it is loading and after it has Loaded. Thank you guys for watching this video. I hope you have learned something from this tutorial. If you see that this video has been useful for you, please don't forget to leave a like as well as to hit that subscribe button to get notified of our latest updates and when new tutorial videos get loaded. Again, this is Joshua from Pixelate. See you later, Pixelators!